All right, so now that we've introduced both the concept of confidence bounds and confidence intervals, let's get a complete list of all the equations that we're going to need. So the first thing, let's actually, let's just make a big old table. So I'm going to split this down into a couple of parts. This is going to be our confidence intervals. And this side is going to be our, let's do a different color. We'll do our confidence bounds. All right, so we've got our confidence intervals, and we've got our confidence bounds. Now we also have to deal with two different types of data. Remember, we can either be dealing with categorical data or we can be dealing with numerical data. So our categorical data, that's is like if we're dealing with, um, with like p hat, that's our categorical data, we're dealing with sample proportions, or we can talk about dealing with like x bar. Okay, so let's get down what we know so far. Let's put up our confidence interval equation. So for p hat, this is gonna be confidence interval at the specific confidence level is equal to p hat times, we've got z alpha divided by two, because it's a two tailed, and we say we're gonna multiply by the square root of p hat times one minus p hat divided by n. That's our equation for our confidence interval for the proportions. All right, so let's go ahead and then look at the confidence interval for the sample means. So for, we've got two different ones. Okay, so for the first one, we've got confidence interval at the confidence level. Uh, this is gonna look a lot of same. X bar plus or minus Z alpha divided by two, and then multiplied by sigma divided by the square root of N. And then this guy down here is gonna be confidence interval at the confidence level equals X bar plus or minus t alpha divided by two comma degrees of freedom. And then it's going to be multiplied by s divided by the square root of n. So remember the difference here is comes from our problem. So do we know the population standard deviation at the beginning of our test or when we, when we gather our data, do we then calculate out the sample standard deviation? If we know the population um, standard deviation, we want to use it, and we'll use this equation. If we don't know the population standard deviation, and we have to calculate that standard deviation from the sample, and I've showed how to do that within our software videos, then we want to actually use the T distribution. Okay, so now we've got our confidence intervals. So now we need to do some splits and see, okay, what are our confidence bounds? Because these are our two-tailed um, confidence intervals, and now we want to do our one-tailed confidence bounds. Okay, so let's start off with our uh, proportions. And we've got that, I'll do one above and one below for the greater than and then for the less than. So if we want to say that we're 90% confident that we're greater than some value. Okay, so we've got, let me do just a little divide. We'll say greater than, and this is our less than. Okay, let's get it up here. So confidence bounds still at a specific confidence level is equal to p hat. Uh, and since we're doing greater than, we're actually gonna say minus z alpha, not alpha divided by two, just z alpha. And this is really, it should be like the absolute value. We'll throw that in, absolute value of z alpha multiplied by the square root of p hat times one minus p hat divided by n. All right, so let's get it down for our confidence bounds as well. So we've got, or for the less than, so we've got confidence bounds at the specific confidence level is equal to, it's identical as above, only this time we plus z alpha multiplied by square root, same thing. Here we go, one minus p hat divided by n. 
All right, so there's our confidence bounds equations for the sample uh, when we're talking about proportions. Now, when we're talking about means, we've got to adjust these equations similarly uh, to account for the fact that now we're only we're going to throw all of our error to one tail, uh, either the upper or the lower tail. So here we've got still. Oh, let me let me do this same breakdown again. Okay, so we're going to go down. I'll put a double line between here. I might get a little small, and I apologize about that, but we've got to get all of this, all these equations in. All right, so this one's going to be greater than with respect to this guy. Maybe I can, I'll do a double, a double break there too. There we go. Less than, and then greater than, and then less than. Okay, here we go. Confidence bounds at a specific confidence level is equal to x bar minus z alpha, and then it's going to be sigma divided by the square root of n. And then same thing down here, confidence bounds at a specific confidence level is equal to x bar minus z alpha, oh sorry, plus, make sure that that's a plus z alpha times sigma divided by the square root of n. And then now we're going to use, so since we're using the sample, uh, the sample standard deviation, we can use uh, our t. So now here we go, confidence bounds at a specific confidence level is equal to x bar, since we're doing greater than, we gotta do minus, and this is going to be t alpha degrees of freedom multiplied by s divided by the square root of n. Okay, we got one more. Here we go, confidence bounds at a specific confidence level equals x bar plus t alpha degrees of freedom multiplied by s divided by the square root of n. Okay, so that was a lot of work, but let's kind of do a overview real quick. So on this side, we've got confidence intervals with respect to if we're talking about proportions or if we're talking about means. If we're talking about means, remember we have this additional split where we have to, if we know what the, what the population standard deviation is, we use it and we get to use a z-score. If we don't know the population standard deviation, we have to use the sample standard deviation, and then we have to use this kind of adjustment to the normal distribution called the, it's our t distribution. Okay, so then we come over here and we look at, okay, these are our confidence bounds. If we wanna say that we're just 90% confident that we're less than some value, instead of saying 90% confident that we're between two values, we can use this, this equation for saying greater than or, and this one for less than with respect to proportions. And then we can do greater than or less than with respect to sample means if we know the sample standard deviation and then greater than or less than if for the sample means if instead of knowing the sample uh, the population standard deviation that we only know the sample standard deviation so there are a lot of equations but it really comes down to can we identify a couple things one are we dealing with a one tail or a two tail um, confidence region if it's two tails we're looking at confidence intervals if it's one tail we're looking at confidence bounds then if we can know is, is this categorical or is this numerical data, if it's categorical, we're dealing with proportions, or if it's numerical, we're dealing with, um, with the means. Now, if we're dealing with the means, the last thing that we have to know is are we using the population or are we going to use the sample standard deviation?